How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is topic 15, energetics or thermochemistry, and in this one, we're talking about energy cycles. So, volume one, energy cycles. We talked about some of the named standard enthalpy changes. We have a discussion about lattice enthalpy, and then we look at enthalpy of solution. The IV understandings, well they focus around that enthalpy of solution and hydration and we need to be able to construct some energy cycles and then calculate some energy changes from dissolution, which is the breakup. Okay, remember an ionic compound. An ionic compound contains a positively charged cation, negatively charged anion held together with electrostatic forces of attraction. The lattice enthalpy provides a measure of that ionic crystal's stability. And the lattice enthalpy is defined as the energy required to completely separate one mole of a solid ionic compound into its gaseous ions. If they use the term standard lattice enthalpy, then we need to include the words at standard temperature and pressure. So if we have an ionic crystal and it breaks down into its ions in a gas phase, then that is bond breaking. Bond breaking is an endothermic process because we need to provide energy to break those bonds. If we have two ions in the gaseous state and they form an ionic crystal, then that is an exothermic reaction because that's bond forming. So the enthalpy of hydration is a measure of the standard enthalpy change accompanying the production of a hydrated ion from an ion in the gas phase. That is, the ions in the gas phase becoming dissolved in a solution. So for example, the enthalpy of a sodium ion hydration would be a sodium ion as a gas, that is a G, plus H2O liquid, we're using water as our solvent, which forms a sodium ion in an aqueous state. That is the enthalpy of sodium ion hydration. The enthalpy of solution is the standard enthalpy change accompanying dissolving a solid in a large excess of water. So for instance, lithium chloride as a solid, we can dissolve that in water to form lithium ions and chloride ions. Now when you're asked to refer to a value, you need to use the data book. And the data book tables 19 and 20 contain the delta H's for these particular equations. So the delta H of hydration for the sodium ions is equal to negative 424 kilojoules per mole. So an exothermic process. The enthalpy of solution for lithium chloride, the delta H of sol, S-O-L, solution is equal to negative 337.03 kilojoules per mole. Remember, refer to the data book for those values. When a solid dissolves, there are two important processes that take place. The first one, the species in the solid become separated from each other. So we need to break the ionic bonds between the positive and the negative. The standard enthalpy change for this endothermic process is the lattice enthalpy of the solid. So we need to break apart the lattice and the lattice enthalpy. Secondly, the separated species then become surrounded by molecules of the solvent, or they might become hydrated if we're using water, for example. So the first thing that happens is the lattice needs to break apart, that's the lattice enthalpy, and then the water needs to come in and form its iron dipole interactions with the ionic compounds, which is the hydration of the ions. So they're the two important steps. So an example of a calculation might be calculate the enthalpy of solution of sodium chloride using data from 18 to 20 of the data book. And the two important inf bits of information we need are the lattice enthalpy and the enthalpies of hydration. So the lattice enthalpy would be sodium chloride as a solid, breaking up into sodium ions as a gas and chloride ions as a gas. And that can be found in the data book. So the delta H of the lattice enthalpy is equal to 790 kilojoules per mole. 
The enthalpies of hydration can also be found in the data book, and we have two of them in this case. In this case. So the delta H of hydration for the sodium ion, together with the delta H of hydration of the chloride ion, would need to be added together because we have our two ions. So for the sodium ion, our delta H is equal to negative 424 kilojoules per mole, and our chloride ion will have an enthalpy of negative 359 kilojoules per mole. So this is the information we need to sort out this question. So the delta H of solution, the, the enthalpy change when these two things are mixed, would be the delta H of the lattice enthalpy plus the delta H of the hydration, the enthalpies of hydration. So in this case, we need to make sure that we have the two bits. We've got the delta H of the sodium ions and we need to add that to the delta H of the chloride ions. So oh, the overall enthalpy change will be those two things plus together. Now we've got 790, which is a positive value, and then we've got our negative values from the delta H of hydration. So we're going to end up with a value that is quite small in this case. So the delta H of solution is 790 take away 783, which is seven kilojoules per mole but it's still an endothermic process, so it takes a little bit of energy from the surroundings to dissolve the sodium chloride. Okay, this time we're gonna use an energy cycle to calculate the enthalpy of solution of potassium iodide. And again, we're looking in the same location in the data book. So the, en the lattice enthalpy of potassium iodide, look it up in the data book, and it's 650 kilojoules per mole. The two enthalpies of hydration we need is the potassium ion and the iodide ion. So again, refer to the tables, look up the data. The potassium, its enthalpy of hydration is 340 kilojoules per mole. And the enthalpy of hydration of the iodide ion is equal to 287 kilojoules per mole. Now because this is an energy cycle, we need to have a graphical representation of this. So when we're asked to set up an I a, a cycle, we need to go with this kind of diagram. So we've got our enthalpy on the left, and then we'll have a number of different spots where we can put in our other enthalpies. So right down the bottom with the lowest enthalpy, we have our potassium iodide as a solid. The first thing that needs to happen that we need to put in is the, the lattice enthalpy. So breaking apart the ions into the, sorry, the ionic compound into its ions in the gas state. So the potassium iodide lattice will break apart if we add in enough energy to overcome the lattice enthalpy, which in this case is 650 kilojoules. After we've broken apart the lattice, then we can start to have hydration of those ions. So the next step in the energy cycle will be to place in the enthalpies of hydration. Now going up was the positive values, so the negative values will be coming down. So here we've put in an arrow going down to what would be our enthalpies of hydration. And in this case, we've got K plus aqueous and I minus aqueous. There are two enthalpies of hydration, and then we can add in the values from those two enthalpies. Adding those two values together, the delta H of hydration is negative 627 kilojoules. So the enthalpy of solution will be the difference between those two levels. So we can see here and graphically we could work it out that the delta H of solution will be equal to 650 take away 627 
which will give us the value of 23 kilojoules per mole. And that is our energy cycle. Okay, volume one, some top tips. Remember and know how to use the data booklet. And then writing down the equations always helps with the setting out. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.